Y'all can have been there. That means hello. Good morning. Yeah, can is hello in our language. It doesn't mean quite hello, but it is well. It is well with me and it is well with you is what I'm saying. And I hope that is the case, right? You guys are all well and happy? Okay, my name is Rose Jacob. And I'm going to explain to you my uh, who I am and my language, okay? And I am very grateful to be here. Yeah, those are the four clans that I belong to. My mother and father's clan and my grandfather on both sides of my, my family. And so that's how I told you who I was. That's what we always do when we introduce ourselves, is to tell everybody who we are and who we come from, our parents and our grandparents, right? And that's very important. Today I want to share with you some of the stories of my people. I come from a town uh, called Chichen Biho, means sumac in the water. And I uh, belong to the Navajo tribe. You have Cameron back here, who belongs to the Hopi tribe. So that's the tribe that he belongs to. And he's got his own language. My language is different than his. So it is good to have Cameron here. He's, he's a good kid. I want to share with you some of the things that my people do. So first of all, you know that we live in the northern part of Arizona, north we have uh, part of New Mexico, we have part of Arizona, and Southern Utah. And Cameron's people live right in the middle of our reservation. So we're surrounded by his people. And so, but we have shared many things with each other and they've taught us things and we taught them things. So we are very grateful to be here uh, we are still here. Some people think that Native Americans are gone, that they disappeared, but we're still here. And so I wanted to share with you some of the things that we do. And I wanted to uh, share with you a few things that we do. All right, we are, we are hunters and planters. We plant corn, watermelon, squash, beans, apricots, and peaches. And so we do all that kind of food that we eat. And I want to share with you some of the things that we have. We talk about corn. We have all kinds of corn. We have corn that's different colors. You see that? We have corn that's blue and yellow, and sometimes they're red. And so corn can be used in many ways. You can grind the corn, and you can make hot cereal out of it. You know how you have your cereal? You have all kinds of cereal that's made from corn nowadays, right? What are some of the cereals that you guys have? Can you think of a cereal? Can you think of one? Yes. I'm asking you. Uh huh. What kind of cereal do we have? Uh, can you think of one? Yes. What kind of cereals are your, one of your favorite that's got corn in it? Yes. Can you hear her okay? Corn what? Corn flakes. Yeah, you have corn flakes, right? Yeah. You have cereal that's made out of corn. Some of the corn that we eat. Yes. Um, Captain Crunch. Oh, Captain Crunch. I don't. Let's see. I think so. But there are corn that either you can uh, just have it whole like that, and and this is what they do after. We have a little stone that we put our 
our corn like this one in there and we grind it and it turns into this kind of flour. And we can make bread out of it. We can have hot cereal out of it. And it is very good. And that's how we eat our corn. And we have, like I said, remember corn comes in different colors. We have corn that's yellow. And what we do is, how many of you kids have ever had corn on the cob? Where you boil it, and then you can and you put can salt and pepper on too. it. Have you ever butter. had corn on the cob? It tastes cob? good, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's what we usually do, good. too. And so sometimes what we do is we'll let the corn stay on the corn husk, and we will let it dry. And corn on the cob, let it dry. Sometimes we'll hang it up, right? Does your grandma do that, Cameron? Sometimes, Sometimes we'll, yeah, you'll hang it up and let it dry. And then you'll take two corns together and you'll press against each other and the corn, the little corns will come off. And then we'll put it in a bag and then hang it up. So that in the winter, we'll have dry corn and we'll put it in our soup and we will uh, boil it and it becomes soft again. And so that's what we do with our food. That's how we, we store it so that in the winter we'll have food. And so that's what we do. And then we also make uh, all kinds of things. Our hunters, they go hunting for either deer or elk. And sometimes up in the north, uh, in South Dakota, they do buffalo, and sometimes they'll do deer, and they don't waste. You only kill just enough for the family or your your grandmas and grandpas and cousins, so that you can share all of that. And so when they when they go hunting, they don't waste any of that, and they use a lot of it for different things. You know, when we talk about when you. We use it for, we make moccasins out of them. This was my little, my little girl's moccasins. And she's grown up now, her feet isn't this little anymore. So she has grown up, but these are the shoes that she used to wear. And then, you know, the skin of the, of the deer is what we use. And there's a plant that makes this color. I mean, a stone that makes this color, not a plant. And, um, and so that's, that's how we use the, the hide of the animals. And we use it for clothes too. We make clothes, we make clothes, and also we made uh, we, we bags for them. Presentation, okay? And we so make bags and we uh, wear them so if you'll just on our clothes. Our you can to See, them. these are my moccasins and they're usually worn in the winter because it wraps around my legs so that it can keep me warm. And this is what the, the woman usually wear. And it wraps around like this, see? So it's pretend this is my leg and it'll wrap around and it'll wrap around and then I'll tie it with this and so that it will look like that. And it looks a bit nicer than this, but that's what it looks like. It's wrapped all the way up to here on my, on, uh, by my knee. And so that's a, a woman's shoes. And we also use uh, a lot of plants. We use plants for medicine. We also use plants for, uh, we have a plant that we have that we, uh, it's a tea. We use it for tea. And then we have medicine for colds. So when we get sick, and we boil the medicine uh, plant in, in water, and then we'll drink the juice of it. And that helps us with whatever problems we have. And colds are sometimes, we all have problems with right during the winter. And so those are the things that we do. Now we use a lot of things that uh, are on the earth, like plants, like I said, we use for food, medicine, and we also use plants to make tools, like trees, branches, whatever, and bones from the animals. We use those for tools. And those are things that we do. We use whatever there is. And so we never, we never waste anything. 
So I was going to show you some of the things that I want you to see. Some of the tools when I talk about uh, plants and trees. These are my mother's tools. She's gone, passed away now. But these are her tools. And we talk about how we have all kinds of tools from plants and trees. And this is also one of her tools. This is her spindle. It's called a spindle. And it helps uh, make thread so that she can weave her rug on this. And then we also have other tools that helps, you know, as you weave, this will push it down so the threads are all laying down. And there's one right there, see, That's the little one. And also we use, these are tools, we call it, it uh, they are tools to fight against hunger. So when we are hungry and we need some, uh, you know, food and stuff, my mother, this is how she made rugs, and then she would sell them so that we could have food to eat. She would take it to the store, the trading post. We didn't have big stores like we have nowadays. Mom and my, my mother and father had to travel a long ways to go and get food. And so that's how she was able to take care of us so that we could have food in our stomach and, and take care of us. And these are our, our little uh, kind of like our tools that we use and they fight against hunger. And so those are the tools that we use. And so, and then this is another tool. This is a tool that helps us when my mother's cooking or something, she'll stir this in the pot. This is, sometimes she'll use, she'll have two kinds of it. One is to help stir the food and also to strain food. You know how sometimes you have soup and meat inside? You can pour that over this and it'll catch the meat and vegetables and you'll just have a little bit of broth or liquid and sometimes she'll do that. And then she also, when she's, when she's doing, uh, you know, when she makes her uh, threads and makes it really fine and really thin, she will go and she will get plants from, uh, she will get the roots, the, the big part of the plant and take that and do, do different colors of dye. And so, so she uses all kinds of things like that. And I'm gonna show you some of the things that she uses do plant dye, okay? This is, see the different colors of onion skin? They make different colors in, in the threads that she, she makes. And she'll use onion skin to make a different color. And then, then we have black sheep and white sheep. So when you mix those together, what color do you get when you get black and white mixed together? Green. Gray, that is so smart, look at you. Yes, and then we also, remember how I said we use plants for medicine? Here are some different plants. We have sage, we have uh, all kinds of uh, plants and things in here. And then we also, this is what I was talking to you about when we make tea. This is, uh, uh, this is tea that I drink when I have a cold. And so they're in little bundles like that. And then we have different kinds of plants. Oh, that one smells so good. We have uh, all kinds of different plants that we use. So plant is very important in everything that we, we do and use. So we use plants, trees, and all kinds of things. Now remember that what I was talking about, uh, the, the threads that go in here to weave it's usually like that on a sheepskin. You see this? It is very thick. And what the people will do is they'll uh, shear it, cut it off the skin, and then that is what we will, after it's been cut off there, we'll get some of it on here and we will card it like that. See, we card it and then, to get all the dirt off. So when we do that, we'll take it off like that. 
This is called a cardi thing. And so we'll take it off like that. And usually when I'm, when I'm sitting by my mother, my mother's always weaving. And this is my mother. And I don't know if you guys can see it. This is my mother and I. I used to have long hair, but this is my mother and I. And she's talking to me and showing me how to weave. And she's explaining things to me. So we were taught things when we were little. And so this is my mother and I. And so she would be weaving there. And we take this wool and then we would twist it and we put it on the spindle like that, see? And then when we put it on the spindle, then we can twist it like that, twist, twist, and then we stretch it. And, and then pretty soon it gets really thin and becomes a thread. And so then we use that to weave our rugs. And so those are important things that we, we use. Now we talk about more plants. This is from, also from a plant. It's called a wedding basket. And we also, what we do when a, a, a couple gets married, you know, get some of that corn, that powdered corn, make it into a cereal, and they'll pour it in here. And the bride and the groom will feed each other from the east, the south, the west, and the north. And they feed each other. You know how they do cake nowadays? And so that's what they will do. And that's how they, they uh, the wedding goes. And then this is a, a, a wedding vase. And what they'll have water in here. And before the couple get married, they wash each other's hands. And this is the, what the water will be in this little uh, pot. And this is pottery too. My people are pottery makers. And so do Cameron's people. The Hopis make beautiful potteries. And they make some beautiful, I bet Cameron can show you some of the pots that your grandma has made, right? You should, that would be so wonderful to share that with, with your class. And so, so when the rugs are done, this is what it will look like. It will look really pretty. When I talk about how wood is used, this is a baby. This is called a cradle wood. There's two parts to it. One that we say is female and male. And they're joined together. And this is mother and father. And on this side here, you will look at this. And this part right here is considered as the rainbow. Okay? And uh, these little things right here, there's four of them. And those are considered the mountains. We have four sacred mountains. And we live in the middle of that reservation where we live. And so they are very sacred mountains to us. And then this string that ties it together is considered to be lightning. You know, lightning that strikes the ground. Sometimes you see that light that comes down. That's the lightning. Now this part right here, the bottom of it, is considered the home. The whole run, we call it home. And so this is where everything begins, right? This is the birth of us as babies, and we start to grow up. And when you look, look at the corn, when it's planted, it starts, after you take care of it, it starts to come out of the ground, and it starts to grow. And this is kind of like your life. You're a child, and you're growing. Right now, you're learning new things, right? You're growing, you're growing. And pretty soon, you'll get older and older, right? You're not going to stay children for very long, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not you're going to be growing up pretty soon. You're going to be like me, with gray hair. And you know, at the top of the corn, you'll see those yellow little hairs. That's old age. That's when the, your hair starts to change color. And you're, and you're starting to... Um, become older. And so when you look at the corn, and when you go
go to a cornfield, look at that and you'll see that. So all of this, when it starts to grow from the ground and grow and grow and grow, and you're learning new things every day, aren't you? Teacher teaches you some good things. And so that's kind of like this one. This is a home where you start life and as you get older and older and older, pretty soon you'll be out of this cradle board. And this thing right here, it comes from cedarberry seeds, and we call it a ghost bee. It is kind of like a dream catcher. It protects you and you, all the dreams, bad dreams, you know, how it catches bad dreams and good dreams. And so this is kind of like our protection for the baby and for us. So the people used to use those and wear them as necklaces. And so now baby's asleep. So now, you know how sometimes when uh, mom probably sings you to bed sometimes when we were tiny, mom will sing a little uh, lullaby song. And so when I sing for my little girl, my little boy, when they were little in the cradle board, I would say, Share away a thing, say, I don't child, I don't child. As your goings are the beats and teens, glory for you. As your goings are the beats and teens, glory for And so I would sing for the baby like that. I'm saying, baby, don't cry. Go to sleep in your little cave, your little cradle boy. So I would sing the baby a love line. Pretty soon, baby's asleep, see? Baby's sleeping right now. So. That's the little cradle board song. See, when we talk about homes, we also have homes where different tribes have different kinds of homes. We have uh, the tribe up in the north, up uh, the Plains tribe. They lived in teepees. They lived in teepees like that. And this, the skin was made out of buffalo hide. And I'm sure that's about three or four buffalo hides that make that covering. And so they, they bring this down real fast when they need to move. So this was easy to carry and take to different places. For ceremonies, they use their teepees. But Navajos, my people, we live in a thing called a Hogan. Hogan. It was made into this shape. And I didn't finish it, but this is what they look like. And it had mud covered, just kind of like the back and they used to cover it that way. And then they had a door. Before they had doors that closed, they used to have a blanket that went and covered it. Now, Cameron, his people, they lived in uh, what they call adobe houses. And like they're stacked on each other. It's really neat where they live. And families live in this kind of a home but their homes were stacked on each other. And it's really unique to see that. But in the Hogan, uh, you go in the Hogan and you always go clockwise, which is like how the clock moves. So when you go to the house, you always go to your, what? To your left, right? You go to your left and then, my parents used to live uh, I mean, and we all lived in this one room, and we would, uh, every morning, we would take, we each had our own sheepskin. Every morning, we'd take that, and we'd take it outside and hang it, and then we would, uh, in the evenings, we'd bring it back in, and we'd lay it down on the floor. We didn't have dirt, we didn't have cement floors, we had dirt floors, and so we would bring it in, and we would and they lay it next to each other. There was 11 of us in my family. So they, uh, we, we were like little sardines sleeping next to each other. And then my parents had their own little area. And so all the cooking and the living was in that one room. And it's probably not even that big. It's probably partly the size of this area. And so it, it was a, a very small area that we lived in. I was wanting to share this with you, and this is also a hide made from a hide. It's made into a drum. We made a drum out of this. And so I wanted to share a song with you. And my people, 
We're singers, we sang songs that told stories. We also told stories in the winter. And I don't know if teachers taught, uh, shared a story with you, but we also do storytelling in the winter. Not, uh, not in, uh, in the summers we told different stories, but coyote stories, we tell stories about those in the winter. And there's only certain things that we can do in the winter that we don't do in the summer. So, but I'm gonna sing you a song. You know, when my people were taken away from their land once a long time ago, and they were sad because they were taken away from their land. And so for four years, they were in a different place. And they, they a lot of people died on the way because they marched the, all the way from their homeland all the way to, into a different spot called Bosco Redondo. And they were there for four years and they were so sad that they wanted to go home. And they uh, finally, they were asked, they were told that they can go home. And so they did. And while they were there, they were sad. They would miss their four mountains that they lived in. And so this is the song that they were singing, the men were singing. sing another song, see if you guys know the song. So we sing a lot, and in the songs we tell stories. And this one here, another song. This is a story about a, a little a bird, a bluebird, saying to uh, his grandchild, the "Grandchild, it's time to get up. Morning has come." And so this is what it sounds like. Ana ana abaye iye, ana ana abaye iye. Ana ana apa ye ye ya 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 ana ana apa ye ye ana ana apa ye ye ana ana apa ye ye ya ya he na ya na re ha i ka ayash no tish a ne ye me di da shi tu shi ne ye ana ana apa ye ye ana ana apa ye song. So we sing a lot, we tell stories, and, and that's just, this is a part of our culture, is to tell stories. Well, let me tell you one story. There was a story about coyote and deer. The mother deer was one day, they were strolling around, 
and uh, walking, and all of a sudden, Coyote comes up, and the mother bear was a little hesitant because she didn't like the idea that Coyote was coming around and sneaking around them, and so she finally said, what do you want? And then the coyote says, oh, I was looking at your little baby does. They're so beautiful. Look at the dots on body. How did you get them? How did you get them looking so pretty and golden brown? Can you tell me? I have babies of my own, and I want them to be as beautiful as yours. Mother Deer didn't like the idea that coyote kept looking at her babies, and so she finally wanted him to get away. So she said, okay, this is what I do. I took my babies and put them in a cave and I built a fire, a little fire in front. And then all the sparks from the fire, it gets on their skin and it makes those little white dots, white spots on their skin. And from the fire, it makes them golden brown. And then Coyote said, well, I'm gonna do that because I want my babies to be beautiful. So Coyote went back home and she went and put her babies in the cavern. She said, I'm gonna do better than dough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a big fire. So she did that. She put her babies in the cave, put big, big fire. After a while, when the fire stopped burning, she went in and got her babies and they didn't look exactly. They were crying in there and say, ow, ow, ouch, and they were crying, and, and the sparks were burning them, and when she brought those babies out, they were all dark and charred, and their ears were sticking out funny, and they didn't look as pretty as the does, and so Coyote got upset, and so they said that to this day, Coyote is always hanging around the doe and her little ones, and she was very upset though that her babies didn't look pretty like the deer's baby. Those kinds of stories we talk about. So it's telling us what? What do you think it tells us? Because she's always saying, I'm gonna do better than you, or sometimes we'll say things like that, huh? I bet you I can do as good as, you know, better than you can do it. And so we kind of say, it makes us people be mean to one another when they say that, right? So it's telling you not to be mean, to be nice, and to be kind. So stories like that, coyotes, sometimes they're silly things, but it teaches us things too. So remember that, okay? So when teacher tells you a story, you can listen to her, and she'll teach you some good things. So that is what I have to share with you today. Those are the tools that we have, and they're very important. And today, the tools are different probably in your home, right? You have different kinds of tools that you use in your home to cook and to make things. Okay, this is another one. These, are, we usually, my mother finds these out in the field. And this thing, you know what we use this for? We use this for a hairbrush. Oh, it's a hairbrush. Yeah, this is a hairbrush. We also have uh, another one kind of like this that we also use, not that much, but. We use it to uh, strain our food, like we pour liquid into here and catch all the stuff. And then we just get the juice down here. And so, but this is a hairbrush. This is my mother's. This thread here, this material is older than I am. And I'm old. This has been there for many, many years. And this was my mother's and she gave it to me. And so that's the hairbrush. And my mom's hair used to be real long, and she'd brush her hair like this. And then she'd put her hair in a bun back here. And so that's a hairbrush. So now you know, if you see something like this, you'll know when we uh, get new ones, we would go out in the field and we'd get these. And they're usually green, but then after a while it dries and this is the color they come in. We were also pottery makers, like I said. So we, we have different pots. And I bet your grandma's got beautiful ones, right? Yes. Family. All right. Thank you so much for letting me uh, share with you. Yes. Which one? The eagle. Oh, the eagle. Yes. We have, these are very important uh, birds to us as Native American people. We use the feathers 
of the eagle for ceremonies. We, they use it in their head, headdresses and you know how you'll see feathers on native people. We use the eagle feathers. And we don't just kill an eagle. They usually the eagle die on their own and we can find the feathers or sometimes they'll fall from the sky. And so that's how we use it. We use all, all the eagle feathers. I forgot to tell you about my jewelry. We have turquoise. These, these are our beads that we have. It uh, comes from the ground and these are stones. They're called turquoise. We also have coral, which it comes from the ocean, yes. the bottom of the ocean. I know. Different yeah, colors know. come in that. So, And then we have silver. We use a lot of silver in our jewelry making. You can see that all over. See, I've got rings and bracelets and things like that. Thank you so much for letting me come. I is Ibakens, and I can't shut down a guido and I see guido Ibakens. I said thank you for letting me come. I'm very grateful that I was able to share with you these things today. My language was used during World War II. They used our language to help so that the enemies wouldn't know what was happening. We were able to win that war. That is why our language is very important. So if any of you speak a different language, you need to keep it, okay? Don't ever forget. And so remember, if you have a different language, you hang on to that and keep it. Put it right there in your heart. Always remember, it's very important for us to remember the language that we were given by the Creator. I thank you so much, and I appreciate you guys letting me come. I can't